again. Uh, my name is Anna Catterson, Instructional Designer for Neosho County Community College, and I want to welcome everybody this evening to the Camtasia Studio Part 2 training. And this training, uh, again, is for those of you that want to record your lectures and place them uh, into a video and then have that interactivity ability where you can add music and sounds as well as adding call-outs or maybe still images. You can also use this program to create interactive quizzes and you can send those results via email and in July when the new update comes out we'll also be able to embed Camtasia's uh, quizzes right into Inside NC. So you know not only are you asking your students to watch them but you're ask, also asking them to comprehend it by following up with a quiz at the end, which is great. It's interactive, it's a flash-based quiz, um, and it works, works really well with the video. So here we are back into Camtasia, and I have opened up Camtasia Studio. Remember that you will have two programs when you download Camtasia Studio. You have the Studio 8 itself, and then you also have the Camtasia Recorder. So the recorder is um, also embedded into the studio. If you didn't want to use it, it's also up here at the left-hand corner. And then if you didn't have, um, if, you, if you already had a video, you can import that media by selecting this option, which is what we talked about before. You can import any graphics that you have or any other media that you have. Now, in my library, we had talked about um, when you add the clips to the library, they will still be there the next time that you open the program. And you will see that this is the video that I had imported the last time in a, the first training that we did. So uh, if, if you weren't in that first training, you would want to import that media up at the top, or you could record the screen and it would automatically go to the timeline. But this is a separate video that was made uh, a few years ago, and I'm just going to right click on this video and add it to the timeline down at the bottom. And immediately when you choose a video to add to the timeline, remember that it's going to ask you what size do you want your video to be. And there's quite a bit of information about uh, sizes out there, but if you remember I, I recommended that you keep it in the same dimensions that the video was recorded in. That way you don't lose the quality, and it will automatically tell you what the size should be. It's recommending the size dimensions. There are other ones, of course. There are um, some for YouTube that you can choose. There's also some, um, like the recording dimensions. You know, there's some other options, of course. You can make it a fixed size. But again, I would really uh, recommend just to use what it was recorded in and then select OK. So we had talked about last week the timeline and this playhead up here at the top and how you can go through your timeline by dragging the playhead through this and that will tell you at what point in the video um, where we are. So by hitting the space bar, and I'm going to mute it or you'll get some terrible uh, feedback on your end, like it'll start squealing like two pigs wrestling in mud. So I'm not going to um, play that music for you, but if I hit the space bar, it'll start to play the video, and it goes through, and I would be listening. So if I made a mistake, uh, mistake, I could hit space, space again to play and stop, and try to locate maybe a word that I pronounced incorrectly or an um. And there were some questions uh, at the last training about how you do that, how do you split out uh, the video that maybe has an error in it. So I wanted to be sure I reviewed that pretty good this evening. So what I have, and, and it's really not too complex, but there is an art to it. The more you practice with it, the better you'll become. Uh, Sarah, Rob, and I worked, I think, for an hour and a half to remove one word out of the presentation, and it was the word, um. But unfortunately, she was talking pretty quickly before and after it. So we had a really hard time getting it out, getting the word out. So what we did 
was we just re-recorded the sentence before and during and after and just plugged it in over the top of it. That's another option you can do too. Uh, but let's say that we wanted to uh, go ahead and, and uh, got the phone ring, let me turn that off. Uh, let's say we wanted to go ahead and split and cut that word out. The best way to do it is once you locate where that word is, and that can be the most difficult part, is hitting that space bar and pressing it again and coming right to the point at where that word begins. And then what you can do is use this red line to highlight the part of the audio that you want to cut out. So let's say that this is what I want to cut out right here. Maybe this was a mistake and I just want to delete it. In order to do that, you have to split it. you got to basically take your video and your audio, cut it in half, and so you have two separate clips is what they're called. So um, what you'll do is you'll right click on that playhead, and since it has video, camera, and audio attached to it, you have two options. You have split, and then you have split all. If you just choose split, it is only going to do the video. So if, you, if your timeline has both, then it would make sense to choose split all. And that's what I'm going to select. And you will see, let me double click, you will see that now I've got two clips. And it kept the video and the audio together. See how that works? So then I could go back in with this and reselect what word I want out of there and split it again. So here I've isolated that one word. So then what I could do is click on it and just delete it using the key on my keyboard and then you'd have to smush these back together like so. It's really kind of an, a puzzle if you think about it that way. If you cut out a word, you just have to figure out how to put it back together. And uh, again, the transition between making it smooth, that's the trick. Because you know when you stop abruptly talking, it doesn't sound right when you cut out a word and you start a new sentence. So there are ways that you can smooth it out. And if you put your playhead right between the two, you can make a, a transition between them. And that's where these transitions come into play. So you could do maybe... Um, a little uh, ripple effect or a blur. Uh, sometimes just a fade is subtle enough that if you select that and drop it here, it kind of appears, if you watch the video, uh, it kind of, you don't even see it too, too closely, but it will appear as if it fades in and out again, and it's so quick, it's just kind of a nice little subtle um, visual display that lets your users know that there was something there, but yeah, it's a pause, kind of a visual pause. So I would encourage you to use the transitions if you do a lot of splicing and taking out um, audio that, and video that have mistakes in them. But remember, you know, when you're doing a presentation in your class, there's times when you have mistakes as well. And I'm sure we all wish we had a rewind button sometimes when we're lecturing, and we don't. And I think your online students will appreciate that. These videos and lectures, they don't have to be perfect. I don't think anyone's asking you to, to write or script everything down that you plan on saying and read it from a piece of paper. You want the uh, videos to be as personal as possible. And if it, is, if it does have a few mistakes in it, then so be it. That just shows that you, know, you do have a personality and you're able to overcome that. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about trying to fix every little mistake. Now, if you have the phone ringing or somebody comes in and starts visiting with you while you're recording, that's different. But uh, I did have a faculty member the other day who, who was really worried about um, their speech and the ums and the ands that they said. And, and uh, really, that's not the focus of this. Uh, that will come as you practice the more you do. Uh, you'll get more comfortable with it. So, But do try to use the transitions if you do splicing. It will help the video. Uh, it won't look as though 
you know, there's this awkward start and stop in the video where you tried to delete something that shouldn't have been there. So that's one thing that I wanted to review this evening were the transitions. Now, if uh, you bring your audio and your video in, and let's say the video is great, you've got a, a PowerPoint that you recorded, maybe you just told it to record the screen and you left the office while your PowerPoint ran. That's fine if you want to do that. And what you can do is once you bring your video in, if you right click on your track, you do have the option to choose to separate the video and audio. So if I go ahead and select that, now I have two tracks. I have one that's just the audio, that's these tall lines that you see, and then I have one that's video. So this is what I was referring to last week. You can take out the audio by just clicking delete, and now I don't have any audio, I just have video. So you can re-record your audio if you want right into the program. And to do that, that's where this More tab comes in. You would select More, and then just do Voice Narration. And it's uh, got a little indicator over here. I can increase it. You'll, you don't want to get lots of red. You kind of want to get between yellow and red. So I'm, I'm pretty good. And then up at the top, you just click Start Recording. And as you talk, it records just your voice only. And it, the playhead will play as you talk, so you can see where in the video you're at. So if you did make a huge mistake, like I did yesterday, recorded a, a presentation for the wrong class, um, you can actually delete the audio and then just re-record over the top of it. And that's perfectly fine if you, if you feel more comfortable that way. And um, so that's another way to do it. And then when you're done, you just hit the stop button and the audio track gets laid in uh, right above the video. So that's two different ways that you can record the audio and video. I also mentioned uh, last week about still images, and I think that that was the point at where we started to lag a little bit. So I wanted to briefly just review that uh, real quickly. If you have an image, a still image, that you would like to put at the beginning or in the middle, maybe you're just showing, um, something that you want them to see. Uh, first of all, it has to go into either your clip bin or into the library. Sometimes I'll start with it in the clip bin, and then before I exit the program, if I think I'm going to use it again, I'll move it to my library. So as you can see, my video is up here. But I'm going to go ahead and import media. And I have made a couple of graphics for my videos, and you've probably seen them if you've been on YouTube, uh, just images that tell where the video came from. And I'll go ahead and put my playhead where I would like it to be, and I'm going to right click on that and select Add to Timeline at Playhead, and you'll see how the um, graphic comes into play here. So, You'll notice that track 1 is underneath track 2. I really don't want the video to play while this image is being displayed. So what I'm going to need to do is actually drag this one down and then this one over so it starts. And you can see that yellow line. It's telling you that that is the end of that graphic so I can release. I want to butt it up so it starts after the image, and then I'll put these back, marry these two back together again. So this will play, and then it will go directly to my video. So you can have a nice image like this, and if you would like, um, you know, you ask the graphic design department, they'll be happy to give you a, a, a little slide like this, or uh, feel free to email me, and I'd be happy to help you with that as well and we'll get you something created that you could put at the beginning of your videos that has your information on it. Uh, but I think this is a nice way of you know, putting your contact information on there and what the class is about. And of course, you can do those uh, transitions. You, know, you just take the fade, let's say. Well, let's do something different. Let's do a cube. And you would put that, just click and drag on the end and I'll go ahead and hit play here so you can see what that cube, watch up here in the center of the screen, 
and you'll see how it rotates out. Just a nice little transition and it's just a click and a drag, drag and drop it right on that picture there. And I think that gives it a nice professional touch. Your students are going to be wowed by your technical skills when they see all of this fancy stuff that, that you're doing. It doesn't take very long either. It's just kind of click and you drag and drop it. And you could do that with anything. Maybe it's a PowerPoint slide or uh, Excel chart or maybe you scanned a page um, in a textbook and you're just highlighting some information there. So, uh, you know, all possibilities are endless on that. But you can insert as many still images as you'd like. Down towards the bottom, you can barely see it. It's a little slider, and if you increase that, it will increase the size of your tracks for you, or you can decrease it so you can see more of them. Also, there's this horizontal bar that you can drag up if you have several of them. I think I said in the last training I've had over 300 tracks before. It's a lot of tracks to kind of keep straight. You can rename the tracks if you'd like. You can right click on them and click rename. So you could call this graphic intro. You could do that on each of them. And when I get a track done that I like and I don't want to edit it, I usually click the lock button so I don't make a mistake and, and uh, overwrite it. So that's an option as well. And once you have a nice graphic like this, remember the callouts that I was telling you about uh, last week. Let me go ahead and select one of these callouts again. I'm going to choose just this rectangle, and when I click on it, you know, it's pretty ugly looking. But look what you can do. You can kind of trick your viewers. You can change the fill color to black. That way they really can't see it's a shape. And then in my text, I'll put in Camtasia Training Part 2. So while that is a call-out, it really, and you can make it as big as you want, you can come over and change your font, even though it's a, a square, we, uh, the users aren't going to know that, there you go, uh, it looks like if it's part of the slide. So you can edit this graphic in any of your graphics with the use of call-outs. So that's kind of a sneaky little approach. You'll notice that I have this text, and you'll look at down here, uh, down at the bottom under tracks. It made a separate track for it, but really this track and this track belong together. I really want this text and this slide to be one, and that's called grouping, which we didn't talk about last week. If you highlight by selecting one track and then holding down shift and clicking on the other, it will select them both. Then what you'll want to do is right click and select group. Then they become one. So then it appears as if it's one track. And I mentioned earlier I had 300 tracks. Well, as I continue to work, I might group 50 of them at one time. If they're all locked down and I know that they're complete, why not group them into one so you don't have this huge list? Anytime you want to edit them, you just click on the plus sign and that expands them again, hit the minimize, and that will uh, put them back into one group. So that's a little shortcut feature uh, that I didn't get to show you last week. Any questions so far on callouts or editing audio and video? I uh, want to make sure everyone understands how to do that. It really is an art. It just takes some time to get uh, used to. Let me go ahead and unmute, and if anyone has a question, feel free to uh, fire away. Everyone okay so far? Yep, yep. Okay. I don't hear any questions, so I'm going to go ahead and continue onward <clears throat> into the Camtasia training. So we've talked about call-outs. We've also spent a great deal of time talking about how to edit audio and video. Uh, let's go ahead and address Richard's question that he had at the beginning, which is, how do we produce this into some shareable format? And even though we uh, talked about it brief briefly last week, let me get into greater detail about how you actually put it inside of uh, Inside NC. 
So once your video is done, you're now ready to produce it. And that's the third option up here on the toolbar called Produce and Share. When you select this option, I would select the first option, which is called Produce and Share. Pay no attention to the other two if you specifically want to put this directly into Inside NC. If you want that uh, source code, then you've got to click this first option. So here we have uh, the options. And Screencast is a, a program that Camtasia has, or not a program, a website that you can publish it to. You know what YouTube is. Uh, and then there's some other options with MP4s and, and so forth. We're going to select the custom production settings and select next. These are the settings that you will have uh, for your video. And for your Inside NC students, they're going to have uh, probably Windows Media Player because that comes with all of the personal computers. It doesn't come with a Mac, but it comes with a PC. Your students will also have MOV files, and that comes with a Mac. This is a QuickTime file, so I usually choose MOV for my students because I figured um, my Windows users, my PC users, they can download QuickTime for free, and I usually put that in the instructions, but my Mac users can't download Windows Media. So the MOV seems to be a good choice for me. Often, I will use the top option because it's an MP4, and that's available because it plays on a browser. It plays on um, Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox. So often I will choose that version. If you do any quizzing, you have to choose that top option. So those are the only three that I use uh, in Camtasia and the only three that I would recommend for Inside NC. I would probably recommend the top one for almost all users unless you did not have quizzing. If you do not have any quizzes embedded in your video, then I would recommend either the Windows Media video or the QuickTime, depending on your, your, your type of students. You could always choose one and then go back and reproduce it as another one and upload two files if you wanted to. Uh, but ultimately, I usually either choose the top one or the QuickTime movie. So I'm going to choose the top one and select Next. And then I have some other options. It asks me, what type of controller do you want? Uh, there's not a whole lot, but they're kind of fun. Uh, I know when I first started doing video years ago, I thought this was the best thing to be able to put my own play controller on my videos. That, I thought I was pretty high, highfalutin stuff to be able to do that. And it was impressive to other people. So you can tell people that you have, you put your own play controller on your videos and they'll be so impressed. Any of these styles will work just fine. Uh, you just choose one that you like. There's not one that I recommend. They're just different designs. You can also hide them as well. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Then that way the student would be forced to listen to it. It would just start playing automatically and just keep playing over and over and over again. Um, so I'm not sure if you'd want to do that. Even to your worst student, it would be pretty bad. Uh, you can also tell it to pause at start. So if you want it to start automatically, you could. I usually have it pause until it, it downloads completely. You have some size. I usually keep this default. Some video settings. Here you can adjust the quality. If you have a very long video, you may want to bring that quality down to about 50% because your student is not going to want to wait for it to download. I usually am under 30 to 40 minutes for all my videos, so I stay around 80 to 85%. I usually never go to 100 because then it does take a little more time, but if it's only a 10 minute video, shoot, crank it up to 100, that would be fine. But anything uh, longer than 10 minutes, I'd bring that quality down just a little bit. Everything else is the same. You have some options. I do not have any captions or table of contents in here. You can put captions into your presentation if you have students that have um, hearing problems, auditory problems, you can put visual captions in. I'll show you how to do that once we produce. 
and then a table of contents could be inserted where they could click and go to specific places within the video. You can also make it searchable where they could type in um, a key term and it would pick it up uh, with your audio. And so that's, that's really nice for students that have disabilities. And we'll choose next. This screen again gives you some options for copywriting your video. And up at the very top, this is a very important uh, option right here. If you do anything, I would strongly suggest that you um, do, fill in this video information right up here at the top. What this does is it allows you the opportunity, and let me spotlight that so you can see it right there. What that does is it allows you uh, the opportunity to put your information in. So you're telling it that this is your info. So you click on options and then you can give it a title. But what's cool about doing this is when you type all of this information in, it's actually embedding it right into the code of the video. So it cannot be stripped. So if somebody does steal it, you are the real owner and they can't delete it. So it's important to put this in there. Technology, the date, usually leave some of this stuff, English. Um, you could fill in the other information with keywords, definitely a description I would put in there. But the second one is author information. So you can see this is a video I did previously today with Kevin, so I have his information in here. It keeps the information that you put in previously, so keep that in mind. If you have a contributor, the publisher, email address, and where the rights are owned. I've actually had somebody on YouTube email me and want to purchase one of my videos. I didn't know, first I was flattered, but then I was kind of uh, freaked out. Um, but, he, he got the email because he tried to strip it and it had the rights management uh, email address and he asked to purchase it and uh, the price just wasn't right so I had to turn it down. But there's quite a bit of information. I would encourage you to put that in there. There's also iTunes information. You can block it from iTunes if you go to YouTube with it, they won't be able to, to uh, sell it on there. So this is great information up here. And if you put that in there, um, that's what I think that's one of the best things about Camtasia. They can't steal it. It's yours. You own it. Um, so be sure that you do that in your videos. This is a, also a, another little option here. Uh, it's called uh, SCORM, which is an e-learning lesson, which we'll get into this fall. <clears throat> if you click on options here, we can actually uh, do handouts, materials, uh, all of the PDFs that you attach. We can make them a learning pack and zip it. So when they download the video or click on the link to the video, they'll also have a zipped folder that they could download with all the files in them. So that is a really uh, neat tool. Uh, I'm going to deselect that because uh, we're really not at that stage yet, but that is coming in the fall and we'll do an advanced training on that. But, but think of the options, especially in the nursing area, healthcare areas, you have those great big packages of content that you want them to have and you can put it all in one video file. And that's, that's a remarkable thing. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and just choose next. Those are probably the two most important features here. We're going to give it a name. Remember, no spaces. Camtasia, no spaces, Anna, I just said that. Camtasia training part two. You want to tell it uh, to go in a particular folder. I usually have mine on an external hard drive uh, because of the number of space. So you could choose the Manila folder over here and select your external hard drive to place it on and then choose a folder if you'd like. Uh, any of your folders on your hard drive to put it in. And then when you're done, you would select Finish. And then it's going to render. <coughs> now this video isn't very long. I don't think that it was uh, more than uh, 10 minutes. So you can see that the rendering process is going pretty quickly. Normally in a 40-50 minute video, uh, that would not happen. So. Uh, we're lucky because the video isn't very long. Actually, we're over halfway done. 
sometimes when I render like these videos that I'm recording now in Camtasia, uh, I'll let them render and I'll just leave. I'll let them render all night and come back in the morning and they'll be ready for me. Uh, but they're an hour long. Uh, I think it usually takes, oh, between 45 minutes and an hour uh, for an hour long video. But you see how quick that was. So we are done there. It went ahead and uh, made all of these files for us. And if I click on this open production folder, and let me move this over, here are all of the, whoa, I just lost it. Here are all of the files that it has created for us. And there's quite a few files in here. There are skins, there are some scripts, uh, and it looks kind of messy, but look at the type. That's what you need to look for. And you'll see that there's an, the MP4 right there. You're going to see it because it's the biggest one. Here it is. It says Camtasia Training Part 2. It's an MP4 file. Richard, this is the file that you need to attach to Inside NC. So what I'm going to do is take this file and let's put it in my documents over here. Here it is in my documents. And actually, I'm going to put it over to videos because I don't think I have any over there. Yeah. So here it is. I just drug it and dropped it, dragged it and dropped it over to my videos folder. So this is the file that I want to include into Inside NC. So that's our next step. Before I go on and show you that, I'm going to unmute. And are there questions about the production uh, stage of that? It will also pull up an HTML file so you can see what it would look like on the web. Here's the video that we just rendered. And if I uh, go ahead and hit play, well, because I moved it onto the desktop so it can't find it, if I went ahead and hit play, then uh, the video would play for me. So it gives you an HTML as well. But the only file that you're interested in is that MP4 that we just moved to videos. Are there questions about the production and the sharing? Go ahead and uh, uh, type them out there in that chat for me if you'd like, or speak up now or forever hold your peace. Any questions on production? So if I also put that in a Windows format versus the MP4, it would be that, that file that I would move over. Richard, I had my computer on mute, so I got move over. Can you repeat that for me, please? Uh, yes. If I had decided to copy it in the Windows format, it would be the Windows file that I would move over, correct? Yes. You would look for the um, WMV file, the Windows Media file. Right, right. You okay. would still have all of those skins and those scripts. You just want to look for that one particular file. That's all you need. Okay. Great question. Any others? Nope. All righty. We'll continue. All right. So I've got Inside NC pulled up, and I'm going to go to one of my classes here. And I'll go ahead and uh, mute so I don't hear everybody eating their popcorn. Mute all. All right, so I'm going to pop in here to um, the new course template that will be coming in the fall. If you haven't seen uh, the Inside NC videos, I'd encourage you to look at them. This is the new template that you will all have in the fall. And let's say I want to put that video into my course, and that was Richard's question earlier tonight, is how do I get that into my course? So I would recommend, we'll go to coursework because that's where I put my videos at. And if I'm going to add an assignment here, I would want to choose one of these uh, to put my video in. So I'm just going to choose the basic format. <clears throat> I'm going to call this Instructor led video. Sometimes I put lecture. Just depends on my mood. Either one. And I will tell it what unit and if it's required, it's participation. I have another category called um, instructor led videos that I have decided to use when I want it to be due 
they must watch it by Wednesday, we'll say. I want to show this in the course calendar so it will go over to my overview page. It's open now. And then I've got some basic uh, assignment instructions for books, but you know, no one ever reads anymore, so I'm going to close that. We're doing a video. We've got instructor files down here at the bottom. So there are a couple ways that uh, you can do this. You can, um, if, if, if this were on YouTube, I would put instructor-led video, please click here to watch. I would highlight it and then click on the chain icon and simply make a link right here into the URL for them to go to uh, for YouTube to find it. So that, that's probably the easiest way. If you had a YouTube video, you'd just make a link to it or I'd put it in my instructions. If you don't have a YouTube, if you have a video like what we just did, I would put a description here of what the video is. And then down here, I would give instructions on how to download it. Students, please right click and save the video that is attached below. Down at the bottom, there's an option to add a file, and that's what I'm going to select. I'm going to select Browse, and I believe I placed it under Videos. There's my video. I'm going to select Open. I'll give it a name. I'd give it more of a description than this, but <laughs> watch this now and add the file. And it will take just a minute, uh, usually not too terribly long. I've never had it go longer than three minutes before, so that's a good thing. There it is. It's going to refresh your page, and then at the very bottom, there's your MP4 file. So let me save this assignment. I prefer doing it this way than embedding it. Oh, hold on. It's worth so many points. We'll put five points in there. Um, okay, so here is the instructor-led video, and this is exactly how I have mine set up. In each unit, I would have an instructor-led video that covers those chapters uh, for that particular unit. They would click on it, and let me show you how it looks to the student. Change the view. They would click on the video. There it is. If they just click it one time, it's going to automatically download and play it in this browser. And it's coming slowly. I don't prefer that they do it this way because if they're on dial-up, it's going to take some time to buffer. And I'm not going to wait for it. It looks like it's almost done. It's at 95%. Instead, I told my students to right-click on it and to save it. And by saving it, uh, they actually are saving that video that you created to their computer. I like that. It's like having a piece of a textbook that's saved. Then they can save it to their documents or wherever they want to save it at. You see it's much faster. It's already done. Then if they double click, their uh, video player will open up and immediately start playing the video. Now, of course, you can't do it other ways, but I think that this is best practice because they have the actual video file. Uh, they can save it. They can reference it over and over again. They can also click on it one time and play it as well, and some will. Some will do that. They can also save it into their iTunes if you made it permissible. I think I, I, think I did. I think I told mine they could. I know I did tell them they couldn't. So they can actually put it into an MP3, an MP4 player. They can put it on their cell phone if they save it. So that's the method that I like to use. I think it works the best. Yes, Ryan, uh, Richard, you can also attach it to an email for your instructors to use. However, um, I'm not sure tech services will like that because it's going to eat up a lot of space on the email server. 
So instead of emailing it, it's probably best if you use YouTube or you post it on Inside NC someplace where it can be accessible like this. But I, I don't think I would recommend emailing it because uh, it will eat up quite a bit of space on the email server. It's best if you just post it on Inside NC. Okay, so I'll unmute. Was that easy? Yes? No? Well, um, I thought it was very simple. And so let's say I wanted to send a video to my adjunct instructors. Just maybe an introductory video to, you know, from the director to them. Or um, I wanted to give them instructions on certain things that I wanted them to accomplish. If you have a group, which I think would be um, the best way to do it, is over here on the left-hand side, you see where it says My Groups on Inside NC. You can create uh, your, your own group for your faculty, and you can share resources that way. That's okay. what I would recommend that you do, because the groups is um, just for that. But I wouldn't use email for it. You could use YouTube or a group, or I could even make you a course on Inside and C that just has your faculty in it. Okay. Other questions? Not too difficult, I hope. It's it's really just the matter of uh, doing it and and. Taking that extra time, you know, the recording of the videos, that's what takes the amount of time to do it. Um, I would encourage you to set them up, you know, just like this so they know, oh, this is, this is the lecture for the week and this is, that's where you're starting to bridge that gap. I have also posted videos in discussion forums. Um, I have seen before students, um, you know, you, you have this really long, lengthy uh, assignment in a discussion forum and sometimes I'll just you know hop on Camtasia and record my face and myself and say guess what I saw today you're not going to believe this article I ran across and I'll pull it up what do you think about this uh, and then I'll share it on the discussion board forum and that can really get people more interested in the topic when, when you're interested in it so you can use it for discussion forums too and those videos are like three minutes long they're not very long at all Quick and easy. It takes literally 10 seconds to to do it, and it's up and, and running. Um, so you know, think outside the box. I think it would be great to to use them in forums. You can use it um, on the syllabus page. Really, any anywhere you have content, you can upload a video. Maybe you want to review the syllabus with them, just like you do in class. Why not? You know, pull up the syllabus in Camtasia. Uh, record your screen and talk about that syllabus just like you would in a face-to-face -face class upload your video so you have reviewed that syllabus with them um, in an online environment so remember it's all about doing the exact same thing you do face-to-face -face in your online class alright um, I've got just a few minutes left if there's no questions I want to show you the last element that we are going to be doing and then here's how my video pulled up by the way um, in QuickTime, which is my program of choice. I'm going to use the same video here, and next week we are really going to dive more into the quizzing features. I think that the quizzing is going to, wow, if I haven't wowed you yet with the software, then I know that um, I, must, um, I must be wowing you with the quiz, because I hope you're just as excited as I am. Let me show you just a few little sneak peeks with it. I won't get into great details, but at least I'll give you an idea. We do have these quizzing options now that's under the More tab. I'm going to select Quizzing. And it opens up this little quiz panel over here on the left, which allows me to add a quiz. It looks kind of ugly because my quiz actually dropped itself right on top of my groups. So I'm going to move it, see how I can, it's on its own track and it's labeled quiz. I'm actually going to move it all the way down the end of my timeline because I want the quiz to come after the video. It's a little longer video than I thought. There we go. 
and I'll double click down there to get it. <clears throat> so after they watch the video, this is where the quiz will be. So on the left, just watch this real quickly. I'm going to type in my question. And I'm going to um, come down here and add my answers. It can be uh, four options, multiple choice, fill in the blank, or short answer. So I'm going to type in my answers here. Don't say B, you'll be in trouble. Okay, so this is the correct answer. Great. And if you want to delete, you just right click and choose delete. I'll be going over these features next week. But let's say um, you want to add another one, then you can just add as many as your heart desires, different format, and so forth. You type in your quizzing right there. And essentially that's all you do. The quiz uh, becomes activated when you go to produce and share it. So this is the same settings that we went through previously. I choose the custom. I've got the MP4. I've got my um, video information up. And then I have this new window called quizzing. And this allows me to uh, do no quiz reporting. I can report them through SCORM, which will allow us to put them in Insight and see. Or I can just have them send them to my email and I can put in my email information. So I'll put in uh, real quickly here. If you want to experiment with this before our next uh, training. And you can require that viewers put in their name and their email address, or you can allow them to take it anonymously. Choose Next, and then you would finish it with this quiz in it. But this is what it would look like. I'm going to preview it. This is how the quiz looks at the end of the video. Is that not the coolest thing? Now it says one of one, but you could have as many as you wanted. They would give you the answer, so if they chose boring submit answers. They can view or continue. If they want to view, they can see that they're wrong. It tells them if they're wrong. They can continue, um, and I didn't finish it, so they're not going to be able to go too far with this because I'm just in preview mode. But if they were to choose great, submit the answers, and click continue, they'd be able to put in their uh, user information, hit submit, and you would get those results. So I think that that is probably one of the best features with Camtasia that I have seen. We have come a long ways with this program. But think about the opportunities with this because uh, we are now going to have the, the option of putting those results directly into Insight NC coursework. How cool is that? So comments, questions about tonight's training. I hope that you all are just as excited about the the, the training next week with the quizzing.